Well, joining us here on set is Mohammed Al Masri. He's a political analyst and also professor of media studies at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. Hi again, Mohammed. Um, uh, when you look at the Israeli delegation that's in Qatar attending these ceasefire talks, do you think that they have enough of a mandate to be able to move the negotiations forward? I don't think the issue is, is the mandate at all. Um, I think the issue is what does Israel want uh, out of this negotiation versus what Hamas wants out of this negotiation. As we've been discussing, Hamas wants a permanent ceasefire. They want an end to the violence in Gaza. And Israel wants some assurance that it's going to be allowed to, to continue that. So the question is and has been for many weeks, how do we reconcile those two diverging uh, positions? Is it possible to say who's, who's negotiating from a sort of a stronger position, a position of strength? Well, I would say that Israel's negotiating from a position of strength. Based on? Based on the fact that they're supported by the United States. I mean, the United States holds all the leverage. They're the one entity that could end all of this tomorrow with a, with a phone call, um, but which has been unwilling to do so. So if they have support from the United States and there isn't you know, any sort of consequence for what, um, uh, for what they're doing in Gaza, then um, they're free to either negotiate a deal that works for them, right, that meets their conditions, or continue, continue fighting. Much is being uh, said about these divisions uh, between Biden and Netanyahu. Are they enough to make a difference to, to what's happening on the ground in Gaza? Well, I think we have to keep a close eye on it. I don't want to belittle some of the differences that we've seen emerge in recent weeks and, and, and how the U.S. has sort of uh, ramped up some of its rhetoric on uh, Israel, against Israel, critical of Israel. But I'm much more interested in what the United States is doing than what the United States is saying. They are issuing these sort of uh, verbal slaps on the wrist from time to time. We've seen that from uh, Biden, from Blinken, and from others in the U.S. administration. But until the U.S. actually shows that it's willing to change course, until they're actually uh, willing to demonstrate that they're going to implement this kind of red line policy, that they're going to, for instance, stop supplying Israel for weapons, then I think it's just more of the same. Okay, and, and speaking of uh, the weapons sales, we, we now hear from Canada that it's saying that it will halt future arms sales to Israel. Uh, there was a non-binding vote that was held in the House of Commons. How, how significant of a development is this? I think it's important. I think what we have to remember is that while this is an Israeli genocide, uh, plausible genocide on Gaza and on the Palestinian people, um, it is one that is, has been supported by Western governments, like Canada. And increasingly, Western governments are becoming uh, uncomfortable, um, having their reputations uh, smeared by what is probably going to be ruled a genocide here in the next few years at the, at, the, at the highest court in the world. And so you're seeing countries now, like Canada, trying to distance themselves. They want to be able to say, well, look, we, we took a stand at, at, a, at a particular point uh, in time. And so from that standpoint, I think it's significant. It also signals to Israel that um, their time could be running out. They don't have an unlimited supply of time to carry out this war. Okay, Mohammed Al-Masri, thank you so much.